There are people who represent the whole counties, and I'm not hearing them. Not, they are not making requests. So who do they represent then? So, the Honorable Ogola, member for Bondo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are really at a time that uh, as a country, again, we may <laughs> want to look at how come a single commodity can be taxed 100%? Or can the committee check again in terms of which other committees, which other, other commodities are taxed to this direction? Because I think that, that that's exactly what's going to help us as a country. What's happening in energy? That uh, there are problems in power, there's problems in gas, there are problems in gasoline, there are problems in many other things. What is happening? That the whole, whole arrangement and the whole target is only on the energy sector. So, Mr. Speaker, as the committee looks at this the way you directed, I want to believe that the committee may want to check again what others and what is the effect of these others on the economy compared to energy or compared to, fu to, to fuel. Because at the moment, what we are seeing, the, the, the spiraling effect uh, of, of issues of increasing fuel prices against, for example, increase of a, a price of another commodity that would be attracting closer tax as that of fuel. So, Mr. Speaker, I think, I think the committee needs to go a little bit beyond uh, what, what you are directing so that it helps this House in checking really the, uh, uh, the extent at which other commodities can also be looked at for purposes of taxation. Uh, and to the extent that when we are looking at those other commodities, to what effect do they uh, or what effect do they have on the economy in general? So, Mr. Speaker, I think there's the, the, uh, quite a bit that the committee needs to, to do for purposes of making sure that we bring this country back with speed. Thank you. Honorable Duale. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. But Mr. Speaker, this House must rise to the occasion. And let me be very clear and tell the country that this House rejected the increase and the putting of VAT on petroleum. And, and Mr. Speaker, the President used his powers under Article 115. Speaker, that is provided for by the Constitution in order the President to protect the, cons the Constitution and the excesses of the legislature. But never, I have looked at even other jurisdictions, President Obama in his eight years used that power, the veto power, four times. President Uhuru Kenyatta has used more than any other president over 35 times. So, Mr. Speaker, the country must know it's not parliament. And somebody, in fact, we need to go and to Judge Odunga and Judge Joel Ngugi to give us an interpretation of Article 115. Let me come back to this matter of fuel. Mr. Speaker, 78 shillings of every litre we buy of fuel goes to taxation. And I want to tell the House that 78 excise duty, 15 shillings per litre. Road maintainers, 18 shillings. Petroleum development, 7 shillings. Petroleum le levy, 2 shillings. Come to VAT, 12 shillings on petrol, 8 shillings on diesel. Cumulatively, Mr. Speaker, out of the 145 shillings you pay per litre, 78 goes to. And it is factual. It is in the books. Mr. Speaker, this House must rise to the occasion. We must bring a bill, Mr. Speaker, and give us, you have the powers, give us that waiver. And you want to become a candidate in the next election. Yes. This is good for you. It's good for you, Mr. Speaker. Let us not wait for Wanga, the chair. She, the House was on recess. She should have prepared her bill. Mr. Speaker, the President cannot use Article 115 to harass. And the whole thing is about IMF, Mr. Speaker. I may have said we must charge VAT. This president is using his powers to make innocent hustlers and Kenyans suffer, Mr. Speaker. And this House cannot just sit and debate. The Speaker allow a private member to bring a bill tomorrow, and allow him a waiver on the pre-publication period. By next week, Tuesday, we, the bill goes to the president. He brings a veto. We raise the two-third majority, and we disagree with the president, Mr. Speaker. Each and every member here must rise to the occasion. It is not business as usual. We must reduce the 78 shilling in form of tax.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, let me thank Honorable Mule for bringing this petition and Honorable Arati for asking for motion of adjournment because that's significant, the significance, the importance of this. But may I also thank you, Mr. Speaker, for directing on two things, actually three, that it goes to the Committee of Finance. Two, they look into the reasons for the rise other than the taxes as we know them. And three, they come with the bill so that we move forward and make a difference. But Mr. Speaker, let me also say that we should, they should also look at EPRA, the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority. I know it has the mandate to actually regulate the prices. But is it only regulating the prices using some formula to reach a figure and putting that figure out without looking at the impact and advising the government necessary? Normally in those situations, if you find that the, the, the formula you are using, the policy you are using is hurting the system, it is your duty to also advise that we can, at this rate, we'll go to this level and this is the impact. Do we do it or not? I think they also need to look at the role of EPRA and if it needs, if we need to amend some laws to give it that authority, it is important. They are the first people to come in contact with the increase. And Mr. Speaker, I know that there are some times of the month that dealers actually decline to sell because they are anticipating. Sometimes they even seem to know the prices that are coming. So I think the role of EPRA is also important to, to find out. Mr. Speaker, the other thing I think EPRA should do, they actually regulate prices, the pump price against the landing cost. But in between, nothing happens. And actually what has happened to small business in the petroleum is that the importers, which are normally inter international companies and big companies, actually deny them any margin at all. So that you are actually creating monopoly in the petroleum industry. So that they are only big operators. And big operators monopolies tend to control systems in all sorts of ways. If they would also regulate the price to resellers so that you have a, a large number of resellers, it would also be important in price regulation. So I think we need to also look at EPRA. If it is not the mandate, we'll give it the mandate. But Mr. Speaker, let me also comment lastly on the issue of the presidential veto powers. The pack stops with us. We need 100, 233. We can do that. But I'm surprised that Honorable Budwale can say this. While when all those many times were going on, he was actually the leader of majority. Member for Samburu North.